go a little bit into the technical part of the back end. So let's get it. So this is one tip how you can work on getting the racket head above the ball, under it, and to in order to create that spin. So when you position the basket here, you know, you can take a pool noodle or, or like any stick or anything you have there that hangs a little bit out. And you position yourself like you hit a one-handed back and then make sure that you go over that pole, under it, and you go up. It's just a dry shadowing exercise, you know. So you go over, left hand stays on there until you're under it, and then you go up. And then you can have a coach feeding you the ball, and you have to start here, and you do that. Here. The ball comes, and you hit that ball back. So that will just give you, you know, that you throw it at him in a minute, a minute and a half. But it's important for the player to learn that because you have to be losing the wrist in order to do that. As I said earlier, if you're stiff here, you don't get that racket head under, so you can't squeeze tight. So make sure you lose, get it under, and hit it. All right, so that was one thing, what you can do with the basket and the pole. I'm going to move this a little bit back. The next thing is when the ball comes, you can hold the racket with four fingers, three fingers, and two fingers. First of all, you take the pinky finger off. That's going to teach you how to be loose. You take the pinky off and you hit it. Super simple, pinky is off and you hit it. Now you take the both fingers off the pinky and the ring finger. Pinky and ring finger are off right now. Ball's coming, they're off, it's easy. Now I hold it on two with two fingers. The ball still goes over and I have control over the ball because I'm loose. And then you put it together and you hit it with the whole five fingers on that racket. So if you do that before you start hitting with your friends, you're gonna loosen up a little bit more and you're gonna feel a little bit more relaxed and you can hit a little bit more through that ball. So that's gonna increase the power and your ability to get under the ball to roll it. Next thing is what you can do is you put the basket in front of you and you have the coach feeding you. So now I have the ball machine today with me, so hopefully the ball is gonna go over the basket. So if you don't roll it enough for the top spin, you're gonna hit the basket. And if you have bad luck, it's gonna go from the basket and hit you. So let's see if I can avoid that. So if the ball's coming, uh, roll it up so I don't hit that basket and uh, roll it up. Here we go. Ball's coming and roll it up. So if I don't put the top spin on, I'm going to get hit by my own shot. So <laughs> that's another great way. If you have a ball machine, you put the basket out, you have someone to feed you even better or drop you the ball. You really have to get under it and roll it to create more top spin. So now I give you a little tip for the contact point. So you have to have the contact point a little bit in front of you as I showed you. So let's get to the net. So in this one right now, we can imitate a perfect contact point. So a lot of players at the beginning, they don't, they let the ball get too close. So in this drill, you just shadow. This is the perfect foot, foot and a half in front of you. So you go over, under, separate, he freeze here. And now the contact point actually, roll it up. So you have a little re resistance with the net. And that's the only time actually you kind of feel how you brush that ball and create spin. So you can put the ball on here and roll it up. It's working a little bit the arm and you have actually like this moment right here where you can feel the brushing. So you do like 10, 15 of those, go back and then you hit that ball. Just a little um, methodical step for you to, to make sure the ball is in front of you and you have that strength to roll that ball up and create some top spin on that ball. Another quick tip for you guys, if you want to improve your one-handed backhand, works well, just try that out. And another great tip, remember earlier when I said in the video, a lot of players push that backhand, they don't have the closing. So what you can do for that is you take a ball, put it under the armpits. So now if the player is pushing like this, it's not gonna fall out, right? So you go, you can try as hard as you can. If you push, it stays in there. But if you close it out and you finish, over your shoulder, the ball is going to fall out, right? So every time I'm getting to the ball, and I can do that with the machine on, and you put that ball under your armpits, when the ball is coming and I really go through it, the ball is going to fall out of my armpit. So having the coach feed, you put the ball underneath it, you can really work on following really through and let that record go. I always say, you know, you spend like $300 for a great racket. Why not letting the racket work for us? So you have like a 300 gram racket or 11 ounces or whatever that is. Make sure that once it's going, you let it work for you. Your 
back muscle is going to break the motion. Your muscles, you can just let go. You don't have to be tight or let squeeze your muscles. That's not going to give you fluidity in your, in your back end stroke. So you really need to make sure that you let that record go and let that ball, uh, let record work for you. The ball comes and you just, you have to trust it. You now I miss, all right, and the next one goes in. And then you go, you let that thing go for you. Very important because anything that you squeeze and stop or don't follow through, you're never gonna be able to do something consistently good to get it in. Let that racket have work for you. And now, and now towards the end of the video, you know, it was very technical at the beginning, going through the grip, going through the turn, going through the leg phase, the contact point, the finish. I hope those tips those different stages with the brushing the ball, with the ball under the armpit for the finish, with the pole on the, on the basket card where you get under it and over. Those are all methodical steps. You throw a few minutes in there to, in order to get a good back end. If the ball's coming, I have to be sure I can hit that ball a hundred times in a row in. All right. So at some point, that's not going to be good enough to beat my opponent. But this is the most important thing. You have to have consistency. The other thing is, if I hit the ball always at the same spot, it's not going to help me. So now I need to make sure in the next stage of my development that I'm able to go with one ball cross court and then on the other ball I'm able to go down the line. So now I can move my opponent around. Great. Once you have that stage done and you're consistent and you can move them around, you work on the depth because when you play good players and you hit a ball like this, they're going to come in and punish you. So now you want to work on getting the ball deep every time. When you get consistent and you get that ball deep, you, you putting your opponent under pressure because they will have to back up and they can't take advantage of you on the court and take initiative. So the third thing is like the depth of the ball. And then you have to make sure that you can mix it up because if you always hit topspin, your opponent gets used to it. It's easy. So you have to be able to hit a slice and you have to be able to mix the spins up. So if you're able to mix the spins up, slice, short slice, high deep top spin, you're on a different level. And the last thing is obviously if you have it all and you practice a lot over the years, last thing is that pace. To hit a ball hard is great, but you have, there's a certain place and a certain moment in the match when you have to do that. So you have to see that you're in a good position, in a good strike zone. Everything has to be really good to hit the ball hard. So my advice is make sure that you learn to be consistent, then the directions, then the depth, then the spins. And the last thing you should train is the pace. And I hope you guys got something out of this video.